Welcome to another Shadron tutorial and today we will try something not entirely practical but still quite interesting and fun. We will try to solve a maze using shaders and draw the shortest path through. Keep in mind that this is far from the most efficient way to do this but a very simple one which also provides a very nice visualization. Our input will be a simple black and white image of a maze with green color marking the starting point and red color marking the target location and this is our desired output. To solve the maze we will utilize a feedback buffer which is a shadron object that uses its previous state as a texture input to sample from. It is very useful for example for modeling cellular automata or fluid dynamics. The feedback buffer, like any other image, has four channels and we will use each of them separately to represent different kinds of data. The alpha channel will remain constant and will represent the maze boundaries with zero alpha. The transparent pixels will be displayed as white. The green channel will carry a wave originating from the starting point which will spread through the maze and encode the distance from the origin at each pixel it reaches. The red channel is the same but originating at the end point. The two waves will start simultaneously and they will meet in the middle of the shortest path. At this point the sum of both distances is the length of the path. Unfortunately we cannot copy the value to a global variable so we will use the blue channel to broadcast this value to the other pixels. We can then start building the shortest path from the middle until we reach both ends. So let's load the input maze image and construct the initial state of the feedback buffer. We will sample the maze at the current coordinate and determine the color components of the buffer. The starting point is marked green so we will detect it as a high value in the green channel and low values in the red and blue channels. We set the green component to 1 in this case and therefore initiate the green starting point wave. Detecting the end point is the same using the red channel. The boundaries of the maze are black so a low value in all three channels indicates a wall. If your input has a different color scheme, you can simply customize these conditions. Now the initial state of the feedback buffer looks like this. Again, the pixels with zero alpha are displayed white. The shader that updates the feedback buffer receives the sampler for its previous state as well as position and time delta. We will first sample the previous pixel at this position, update it and then return it. To do that we will also look at a number of neighboring values and relay their information to our pixel. In particular we are looking for the maximum values in the neighborhood which are closest to the wave's origin. You can try using different numbers of directions and see what happens. So using a 4 cycle we will shift the position by one pixel's length in a circle and sample the buffer. Since waves cannot propagate through walls we will multiply each neighbor by its alpha making it zero if it lies within a boundary. Finally we update the maximum which will be done separately for each channel. Since we want the red and green waves to represent the distance from the origin, we need to slightly lower their value at each step. I arbitrarily chose this fraction because it looked good. We also need to update the blue channel with the best known total distance and since we are using an exponentially decreasing metric for the distances, we get the total by multiplying them. Now we just have to update our local value according to the neighboring maxima, also taking into account boundaries at this position and return it. We create the feedback buffer using this shader function as well as the initial state function. Since we need more precision than the standard 8 bits per channel, we will add the full range flag and in order to make the process faster we may also set a higher update rate. Only do this if your GPU can handle it though. 
Now we can watch the waves spreading through the maze. What's left to do is use the contents of the feedback buffer to draw the actual path. We will use a handful of parameters for this. So let's sample the input image as background as well as the value in the solution buffer. We will mix the path color into the background using the path opacity we compute. If the blue wave has reached this point, we can determine the difference between the current length and the true path length. It will probably never be exactly zero, so any value below some tolerance threshold will be considered on the path, and to make its edges smoother, we will also use smooth step with another parameter. And this is the final visualization. To get an image of the result, you can press space to pause the animation and then save it normally. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I really hope you like this video and if you enjoy using Shadron, I'd like to ask you to write a review on Steam. And if not, please let me know what you don't like about it. By the way, I have also made significant progress on the macOS version and if everything goes well, it should be available within the next few weeks. See you next time!